Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I occasionally do some videos on real estate investment because as you know, if you've been following me for a while, I, I do a lot of real estate investment I have in the past. And so I thought I'd answer this question about passive. How passive is real estate? Uh, so uh, this question comes from Tom. He says, I'm sorry I'm spamming you with all these questions, <laughs> but I'm hooked on your channel slash site and I've watched a ton of your videos and have prompted me to have more questions. Well, that's all right. Uh, so. Uh, so he says, if I were to try and invest in a rental property and have a property management company manage the property, would this cause any issues? Any issues? Basically, how passive is it? Is there a ne is it necessary for me to be in the USA? Oh, Siri is activating here. Uh, in in order to own the property, I'm a U.S. citizen and will continue to pay my taxes here yearly. Thanks for everything, Tom. So you know, basically, is how how passive is real estate investment? So. It depends. <laughs> if you do it right, it can be pretty passive, but it's not 100% passive. There is this sort of thing about the more you, you've got a few trade-offs in investments that I've discovered. You, you've got risk, you've got passiv passivity, passiveness, we'll say whatever, and you've got liquidity, right? And those things are in different relations to each other, right? And so the, the higher the risk is, the, the more possibly passive you could have something and the higher liquidity, right? The lower the risk is, then you're gonna have different trade-offs in other areas. So let's, let's talk about kind of the characteristics of, well, just give you an example, let's take stocks, right? So stocks, right, they're highly liquid. You can trade stocks very easily. Uh, the, the risk is, is, is medium, it's, it's fairly high. It's not super, super high. And the passive, it, passivity is high. Uh, and then there's one other aspect of this, which is the, the reward, the amount of the return, which is medium to, to, to low. It's not super high. You're not gonna, most of the time, you're not gonna just gen, generally invest in the stock market. You're not gonna make a huge amount of money. If you consider like the S&P 500 average, it's gonna be, you know, like six, 7% per year, maybe 10% but not, not a ridiculously high one. Now real estate, let's look at the characteristics of that one. So real estate is, as far as risk, it's extremely low if you do it right. It can be one of the lowest things. A lot of people don't think this is true, but honestly, it could be one of the lowest ones. And then if you look at the liquidity, it is, it is medium to, it's low liquidity. It's very hard to, to get rid of real estate, to, to sell, to buy, it, it takes a lot in order to do it. You can't just do that overnight, right? You can't just, there's not a trading market for that. And if you look at the, the uh, what do we say, passivity, passivity it, is, it is medium on the passive. It's not as passive as stocks, right? Because there's always gonna be some level of involvement. It's, ne it's never gonna be just this handoff as, as, as you just buy this thing and then it appreciates for you or you, you, you get the investment. You've got some interaction with it. And then as far as the reward, it's, it's fairly high. It could be, you could get very high returns on real estate, higher than the stock market. So, so that's what, I, I'm laying this foundation because I want you to understand where the, the knobs are and where you're, you know, it, it all, there's nothing that's like such a great investment. They're, they all kind of have their, their, their pros and cons, right? And it balances out because, because you've got these factors that are playing against each other. So when you look at it, real estate is going to have, you know, is not going to be as passive. As, as other investments. You just have to realize that. And, and there's, there's this one other element that, we're gonna, that I'm gonna apply to everything in general, which is your skill in dealing with the particular investment. That's, that's a factor that you can control, right? Because the investments sort of have their own characteristics and you can sort of modify the characteristics by your skill in an investment. So let's get in and we'll take the stock market example. If you're a really good stock investor, if you understand complicated options and spreads, and market derivatives and all this kind of complex stuff, you might be able to spin the factor in your, in your favor of you might be able to reduce the risk and you might be able to increase the profits, right? The liquidity and the passivity are, are gonna stay the same. I don't know if passivity is the word, but it is now. So if we take that to real estate, if you're a really good real estate investor, right? You might be able to take the uh, you should be able to take the risk way down, 
but you might be able to, what you could tweak there is a passivity, how passive that income is, because the better that you are at selecting the right properties and selecting property management are gonna control that factor. The, the reward side of it, you can't really control all that much, right? And the liquidity, you can't control. But you can, the biggest thing that you can do with the skill in real estate is, is to make money when you buy, right? That's the risk factor and the passivity. And so the way that you control the passivity is by selecting good properties that are gonna be easy to rent out and by selecting good management companies, right? And, and using management to do that. Uh, in the past, I've made mistakes and I've tried to manage my own properties and the passivity on that investment was horrible, right? I had to be there every week collecting, every month knocking on the door, collecting rent and not doing a good job of it, right? <laughs> and dealing with hassles and fixing toilets and calling plumbers and all that stuff, not passive at all, that's for one property. Now I have like 26 units, right? And I, if I have to send an email or respond to an email once or twice a month, that's all I have to do. Everything else is taken care of for me. And that's because I've, I've gone through, I've gotten better properties and I've maintained those properties to make them more passive. And I've, most importantly, I've selected good management companies and set a good process with them in place. But it took time, it took effort, it took some skill, some learning mistakes to do that. So big lesson, big moral of the story here is if you want real estate to be extremely passive and low risk, you can make it so, but you're gonna have to put a lot of effort into getting to that point and it's gonna take some time. It's not, you're just not gonna buy an investment property and then and then turn on the cash machine and you're just gonna make cash. It's gonna be a significant effort. You're, I fired probably five property management companies in the course of my, my time and I've learned how to evaluate them and to pick the right ones and how to work with them and manage them in such a Way that they're not going to take advantage of me that it's going to be as passive as possible so that's going to be a requirement but if you can do all that i honestly that's why i say that i think real estate is the best investment because i think you can make it passive enough to the point where it's almost as easy almost as passive as, as the stock market and and it's a lot more profitable and that's that's where i've gotten to now and, uh, and I, I think you can, you can get there as well. So hopefully that answers your question. And if you've got a question for me, even if it's about real estate or fitness or whatever you've, you've got, give it to me. Uh, you can email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, subscribe. Take care.